Hi, I'm Ron Wade, author of Turbo Tennis, available at www.tennisserver.com. I've been out here today practicing my kick serves for my September column. Now, I want to teach you how to hit the kick serve, but first of all, I have to explain to you what a kick serve really is. A kick serve is normally a second serve that has forward or topspin, so when it bounces, it bounces higher it probably drops more quickly into the service box. But a true kick serve also has a little bit of side spin, so once it hits the ground, it kind of goes off to one side or the other. If you're right-handed, it'll probably go a little bit to the right. If you're left-handed, it'll go a little bit to the left. The important thing to recognize is, is that the spins really do make it difficult for the opponent to return this particular serve. Generally, they're returning with a ball that's up this high, well out of their strike zone. Well, how do you hit the kick serve is something that we need to talk about in great depth. So let's get started. As is the case with every stroke in the game of tennis, it begins with the right grip. And if you want to hit the kick serve, there are only two grips that really work well. One is the Eastern backhand grip. Now to get this grip, it's really easy. All you need to do is take the racket in your non-dominant hand and put it above your head like this, grab it with your racket hand, and you automatically have the Eastern backhand grip. However, you can also use what is known as the hammer grip or continental grip. And that's another grip that is one that allows you to break your wrist. Now how do you get that continental grip? Well, just pretend you have a little nail and that the racket side is a hammer and if you do that how would you hold the racket that's exactly what a continental grip or hammer grip is like lots of people will move their finger up when they have the full continental grip but it's just as good to keep it tight if that's the way you prefer it with both of these grips the reason they are necessary is that you have to be able to break the wrist as you hit this serve because you're going to be hitting up around and forward on the ball. And the only way you can do that is by using the wrist to provide the power. So again, Eastern backhand grip or continental grip, those are the two grips that you need for the kick serve. Stance is very important in any serve and that's true with the kick serve as well. A little cue that I'm going to give you that I think will help you is what you do with your front foot as you set up to do your serve. I'm in the deuce course and I'm right-handed and I have my front foot pointing right at that net post to my right. When I stand off to the side on the ad court, guess what? My front foot is pointed at that same net post. Now if I was left-handed, I would just do the opposite. I'd probably be standing a bit wider on the deuce court and I'd have my front foot pointing towards the net post to my left. And guess what? If I was going to serve to the deuce court, once again, I'd have my front foot pointing straight towards that net post to my left. If you end up getting in the habit of doing this as you set up, you'll find that all of your serves benefit. And you really do need this kind of semi-close stance in order to be able to hit a good kick serve. The most important part of a good kick serve is the toss. Generally, the toss is a bit higher, but the most important component, whether it's high or not so high, is that the ball lands behind your back. Now, in a moment, you're going to see a drill that will show you exactly how the toss must be executed. I do this when I run clinics. I actually have players go out on the court. I have an extra racket that I put down on the ground and I have them toss the ball in their service motion until that ball can hit the racket face or some part of the racket. That automatically gives them a sense of how the toss must be, which is behind your back and a little bit towards your non-dominant arm side. 
So let's take a look at that drill. Let's take a look at how a kick serve truly does bounce. I'm going to show you a couple serves, both from the ad and the deuce court. And you're going to notice that the ball kicks up, bounces higher, and goes off a little bit to the side. Now as you look at these, I want you to note that I'm about 6'2", and that this bar is at shoulder height. Use that bar in the frame to get a sense of how high these balls are actually bouncing. Let's take a look at my service motion. And again, you'll notice that my service motion is a bit different than what you'll see the pros do. I've got some physical limitations. This shoulder's rotator cuff needs surgery. This knee, well, it needs some surgery as well. And to say the least, I've had back problems all my life or seemingly all my life. But you can still hit a good kick serve because it's really all in the wrist, more so than anything else, and the toss. If you toss behind, your body and if you end up hitting up out and moving forward a little bit as you hit all three of those elements will combine to give you a nice kick you may not get all of the side spin you'd like but you'll certainly get the height on the ball which is the most important element in the kick serve so let's take a look at my service motion which by no means is the classic kick serve motion Practicing the kick serve takes a little bit of time. Once you get your toss and have the right grip, you'll find that it's kind of like riding a bicycle. Once you learn how to get the kick, you probably won't forget how to do it. Now, a couple things that I'll suggest in practicing. First of all, in all of the serves that I used today or did today, I used old balls that are kind of dead. And I like to do that deliberately because if I can get those to bounce up, I know I can get a new ball to bounce even higher. I also like to go around with 10 balls in my pocket. I don't practice serves with a hopper full of buckets, and there's a good reason for it. If you're serving with a hopper all the time, you're grabbing from the hopper, and you're never taking your hand off the racket grip. So of course you have the perfect grip. But in a real match situation, what you're gonna find yourself doing is taking your hand off the grip, perhaps drying it off, and then putting it back on. So I like to end up doing 10 balls to the deuce court, then 10 balls to the ad court. How do I do it? I'll serve 10 to the deuce, then I'll walk over, pick up the balls, serve 10 to the ad. There's an added benefit as well, which is that it takes a little strain off of the shoulder and the arm. You can do 100 serves without hurting your arm or hurting your shoulder very much at all, if at all, if you use this technique rather than the hopper. So again, it's important that you practice the kick serve quite a bit, but once you get it, trust me, you'll have it forever.